Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. Not five minutes into Kwaki's tour of Konoha Village does he try to kill a small child with one of his creepy karma monster arms. I think it's safe to say that Kwaki has some inner demons to work out, and luckily, there's nobody better than Naruto to take him on this journey. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another review of Boruto, Naruto Next Generations, another episode which focuses on Kawaki. And this is another one of those episodes where I ended up liking it a lot more than the manga version. A lot of that is probably simply owed to the simplest of elements, which is the voice acting, the colors, the animation itself. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's no like amazing big action scene in this episode. It's mostly just all about Naruto as he takes Kawaki around Konoha Village, meeting some of these citizens, some of the main characters, having a snack, and of course trying to get a brand new vase for Himawari. But it was also another one of those episodes which made me realize that Naruto has been through a lot of shit, and this shit has basically turned him into a pretty upstanding kind of guy. He understands all of the inner turmoil and hatred that's brewing inside of Kawaki, and there's actually a really heartwarming moment between the two characters in this episode, something that I didn't really feel so much while reading it in the manga, but felt it like ten times more in the anime version. But like I said, it's a pretty standard episode here of, you know, Kawaki feeling kind of bad about the whole vase situation. He realizes that in order to get these people off of his back, he is going to have to get a brand new vase. But at the same time, you can also kind of tell that it is sort of eating at him a little if he doesn't want to talk about it. Naruto decides that he's going to take him around Konoha Village, which basically just leads to a lot of really pleasant scenes. The first one is where we run into Sarada and Chocho, is they're getting taiyaki, and if you've never had taiyaki before, I highly recommend it. It's delicious. They're basically weird little fish pancakes which are filled with all sorts of fillings, everything from chocolate to custard, and my personal favorite, the sweet azuki beans. They're really delicious. It's like sex inside of a pancake fish. The scene was a little different from the manga version, as in that one, basically they just ran into only Sarada, but adding Chocho to the scene I actually think kind of worked, if only for the fact that Pretty much every single thing with her, her shtick, which, you know, stems a lot from her father of Choji, is the fact that she's obsessed with food. But it's also great to see Kawaki interact with some more members of Konoha Village outside of just Sarada. And we get to see here that he's a little apprehensive at first about having a snack, not even knowing the concept of what a snack even is. He felt that he had breakfast, it's enough. No, there are certain pleasures in life that Kawaki has never known until this moment. Uh, uh, makes you realize that a lot of the people within Konoha Village are certainly privileged when compared compared to a lot of the people in the Naruto world. The big war with all the big bad Akatsuki and villains might be over, but there's still a lot of problems in the world of Naruto, and a lot of that of course is stemming from Kara, but the fact of the matter is, no matter how many supermen there are, there's always going to be some Lex Luthers to sort of fuck some shit up. So this scene is really important, as again, it shows him getting a little more comfortable with his surroundings and also eating some taiyaki, which he thinks is delicious, until some kid bumps into him and it really pisses him off and he starts to transform one of his arms into a monster hand and starts to kill him, luckily Naruto is there to stop him. And this is where it leads to another really great scene, and also one that's also highly disturbing, where they actually go to Eno's flower shop, which is the perfect place to find a brand new flower vase, as well as some flowers to make amends for everything that went on with Himawari. Now, everything seems kind of hunky-dory at first, with Kawaki basically just immediately choosing like the first vase that he sees. Of course, you know, Naruto and Sarada try to school him on the fact that he needs to be more thoughtful in his choice, Voices, but while he did immediately go for something, he does at least appreciate the form and function of the fact that it's going to work with the room. The problem is, when Eno decides that she starts to put some flowers in his face, he suddenly gets these like weird post-traumatic flashbacks of him being experimented on, as the whole vase and flowers going into it are strikingly similar to the karma experimentations that were actually done on him, and he ends up dropping the vase in a scene which really freaks him out, and it leads to what is probably my favorite part of the entire episode, where Naruto actually decides to embrace Kawaki, letting him know that he has nothing to be afraid of. And this moment really hit me hard. I didn't actually expect it to do that at all, but it shows how fatherly Naruto actually is to... Kawaki, and he realizes how similar they truly are, and he doesn't want him to end up going down a very wrong path, something that could potentially lead to something very dangerous, and him simply just casually embracing him and letting him know that everything is going to be okay 
well, it was a well done scene with a lot of heart, I have to say. Even the power of friendship creeps its way into this episode with Sarada saying that she's gonna be Hokage someday and Kawaki can rely on her. If he needs anything, she's definitely there to help him out. So again, building more on the relationship between those two characters, which I think is funny because I think a lot of people in the fan community that I've been talking to really feel that these two characters are being shipped. I'm not really much of a shipper at all, but you can kind of see sort of the relationship between the characters building in this episode as she begrudgingly tries to get closer to Kawaki. But the episode ends with Kawaki and Naruto making their way back to uh, his house where Boruto and Himawari are waiting. And Kawaki decides to present Himawari with his brand new vase, to which she basically gives no, like, expression towards at all. It's a little cryptic and strange. She's more surprised at the fact that Kawaki actually did something like this, but Boruto is not too thrilled still. He, he at least likes that he made the effort, but he still wants him to go the extra mile, so he ends up handing him a little bottle of glue, which he's going to try and use to rebuild the vase. Again, Kawaki's not too thrilled about all of this, but again, it's little moments like this that I think are going to humanize and build this character in a pretty good way. And then, of course, we have a nice little tease at the end of the episode with Delta and Kashin Koji arriving on the outskirts of Konoha Village as they prepare to infiltrate it, but of course, they have to be careful. Ino and her Yamanaka clan and all of them have, like, this big barrier around the village. We've already seen it before. They've been building it up. Even Naruto mentions it a little briefly in this episode when he meets with her, but Kashin Koji is able to casually make Make his way into the village, much to the shock of Delta. How is he able to do this? Only people who are registered within Konoha Village would have the ability to do this. Again, just more mysterious clues as to the true affiliation of Kashin Koji and where he came from in the series, and if you put all the pieces of the puzzle together, you might already get your answer, but as someone who reads the manga, seeing these moments play out in the anime version is just spine tingling to say the least. I, I can't wait till we learn a little bit more about him as he makes his way through the village to try and take Kawaki back for the evil car organization. So what's the rundown on this episode of Boruto? I thought this was a pretty solid experience, and honestly, I'm surprised they got through it as quick as they did. This was basically a single chapter in the manga, and they made it a single episode here, and I'm, I'm kind of glad that they didn't, you know, stop down on too many things and, and draw things out too much, because there was the appropriate amount of heart and tension in this episode. Tension coming from the fact that Kawaki is casually walking around the village, and anybody that walks into his path and pisses him off could potentially be killed by a giant monster arm. Luckily, Naruto is there. This is a fact that Kawaki even brings up in this episode that even though he doesn't necessarily like Naruto right now, he's at least happy to know that there's someone with him who can protect him from Kara if they ever decide to try and take him back. He at least acknowledges Naruto's true strength, which I think is actually kind of cool. And the moment in the flower shop where he freaks out and he's embraced by Naruto is, like I said, I think a really powerful moment for both Naruto and Kawaki and their budding relationship. But uh, again, that's all going to come to a head in the next couple of episodes. But again, there are moments of this episode that I like, and I like when they expand on something in, a, in an appropriate and organic way, like including Chocho and the whole Taiyaki scene. Again, wasn't in the manga, but it felt natural here, and it seems like something that she would totally do, and it makes sense. Chocho and Sarada are very good friends. They hang out all the time. It's something we've seen before. But I can't wait to see more of Kawaki's interactions with a lot of the uh, the other mainstays and brand new characters of the, uh, the, the Boruto series, which really aren't all that brand new anymore. Can you believe we're almost at two 200 episodes of the series. It's kind of insane. And, you know, production value-wise, this is another pretty decent-looking episode. It had some good moments. It had some freaky moments, like Kawaki's transforming arm. But again, nothing too crazy going on in the episode overall. I mean, there wasn't anything, like, super drastic or super artistic. It was just a solid, clean-looking episode with some pretty good themes and some pretty good moments, and, of course, building up to the eventual confrontation of Kashin Koji and Delta making their way into the village. Trust me, you want to stay tuned. Things about to get crazy. So, I liked this episode quite a bit. I can't wait to see where it's all going to be headed next. But most importantly, I want to hear from you guys. For me, I thought this was like a 4 out of 5 episode. Pretty solid material, and something that I think all people who are following this current storyline need to check out. But your thoughts may differ. You might not have liked this episode as much, and you might even have loved it more. So make sure to sound off in the comment section below telling me what you thought about this episode and the uh, continuing growth in relationship that Naruto is forming with Kawaki, not to mention the rivalry that's going on between Kawaki and Boruto. And of course, make sure to tell me what you hope to see next, any theories about Kashin Koji, what Delta's going to do, more of that awesome Kara stuff. Let's just, just discuss all of it comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. If you did like this video, please 
give it a thumbs up. It takes just a second, it's really easy to do, and of course it helps out these videos and ensures more people can actually watch them when they are released. I would also like to take this time to thank all of my patrons. You guys are ninja superstars. By subscribing to the channel, watching my content, but making those monthly donations, that is truly freaking incredible. I can't thank you enough for that. Remember, first time donators, I'll review an anime series of your choice, as well as adding your name to this list of amazing people that you see on screen, the superstar ninjas of Ace Guru. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay down there, baby. Ah. Uh.